hey what's up guys we're here with yuri diaz and uh he's going to be showing us his deck they brought to ycs indie that he got top 64 with uh what did you uh how's it going to, uh yuri and uh what did you bring to ycs indie hey what's up man um thank you for having me on your channel first of all uh i brought the spice man i brought uh 60 card branded despia uh to ycs indie you um, love to see a it. very very hard hard take you know especially but i've been playing 60 cards for like a long time and uh 60 card branded like we sat next to each other at nats and we never said hi or anything but <laughs> just no <laughs> We were there next to each other. Really glad to see you out here uh, representing Branded. I believe you were the best performing bl uh, Branded player at YCS Indy, getting 44th place with the deck, coming very close to hitting that top 32. It was one of those events that a lot of X2s did not make it, unfortunately, so it kind of was what it was. But it's really just amazing to see you out here bringing 60-card Branded, such a unique take on the deck especially in an era where everyone is kind of like looking at chimera and looking at that, at that as like the new best build when you know i think we both know at the end of the day that branded despia has the higher ceiling and under the better pilot it's one of those decks that can really just like run through a tournament as you did so i want to go over your choices and your matchups but before uh we do that do you have any shout outs yeah uh huge shout outs to like quality uh gaming that's my local store um and my friend koopa and derek uh so supportive um and thank you for uh lending me the droplets the ulti droplets in my list definitely came in clutch at the ycs um and most importantly to everyone that plays the deck still like the deck's really strong it's just you have to make the correct uh decisions in like every uh scenario like know your matchups and know how to play around it. Like, for example, like a lot of people don't know that Rimbrum like alone destroys SP Little Knight. And a lot of people this weekend like that SP was enough, but it really is, isn't. <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm just really happy. Like shout outs to like the blessing, my boy Baker getting 55th, my boy Adrian getting 40th. We're all from Chicago and we tried our best, but sometimes variants, and bite you in the butt for sure and uh just really uh again uh, amazing job at what you put forward and uh let's just get right into the profile so um this is a 60 card build and uh we start off uh, with two fenrir fenrir was insane this weekend it uh it, if anything it was just a discard off albazer opening so i i have nothing to say just that it was just amazing yeah, no, I think uh, Fenrir is one of those cards that really it, it can bait hand traps and break boards, and it's just a wonderful addition. Um, so uh, we'll get onto the three. We'll get into the Elbaz Despia cards right now. It, so three Albion the Shrouded Dragon. That is certainly a unique take on the deck that I have not seen much of, maybe in sixty card builds before. However, how did you like the three card Albion? Uh, he was ridiculous. Like every time I saw Albion, like my hand would feel a lot more powerful because he literally uh, sets you up for the the mid game or the or the early game really really fast. Like yeah, sometimes like I would like I wouldn't draw an optimal hand and uh, I would draw uh, fusion duplication the one of the two traps that I played and I would just send fusion and I would set fusion duplication and summon the Cartesia and pass just like that was enough to beat someone because uh fusion dupe is a you could just copy uh, branded fusion even if you don't have it in your hand um also uh every time i i opened uh shrouded and uh cartesia it was another and sure way to get me into branded fusion the plus one was really nice uh sometimes him and a combination with duality would get me into sanctifier uh, i have no complaints card is amazing um, at, but at worst, he could also be a pitch, which is something I did a lot. And then it, it would just set you up for the next turn because he would be in graveyard. You did uh, go with the ad lib, in including with the quem. How did you like the ad lib in your 60 card build? Did it come up a lot? So for me, the, the ad lib did, did, did come up a lot, actually, um, because there's lines where 
Uh, you want to set up the triple mirror jade play uh, with Quem and Adlib in your hand. And against certain matchups where like Gimmick Puppet uh, Nightmare wasn't uh, like so good, that's what I would try to set up. And he never, like I never bricked on him, but if I did, like I knew how to get him out of hand because uh, everything just flowed. Like he wasn't a brick. That's why I don't play multiples of Quem or uh, Adlib because I hate drawing clumps of cards in multiple. Um, Adlib... On the other hand, like, yes, he's a brick sometimes, but I feel like you definitely need him for just to recur your one mirror jade. And I, I'm not playing two, I'm playing one. So he was definitely really helpful. Um, He helps you play uh, around evenly match as well, either with Banishment or uh, Branded in Red, which was uh, really, really good because you just make Drago Sopelia. Then on the new chain link, you just summon uh, a mirror jade off the ad lib. Uh, it came up. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that's that's very cool. Uh and so what were those matchups where you'd make it over gimmick puppet? Um so like for example like against Florandaris like my day 2 the first round like that's I lost game 1 like a champ cuz I I didn't even know what he was playing until like but like, games 2 and 3 like what I would typically go for was just the triple mirror jade with Quem, which is a combination of opening with any way to get to fusion. Uh, you can set that up quite easily. And then uh, another thing too is uh, you can set up that line uh, with Despian Lulu Wallet, uh, sending him off Granging uh or a any, any way to have a Cartesia. Cartesia will make a Granging and then send the ad lib. And then you'll already have like an Albion in graveyard, so uh, the ad lib play is already set up. Uh, sometimes I wouldn't search him off opening, but I would do that play where the granule would send the ad lib, and I would have a mirror jade and an uh, Brennan and red set, and that's really strong. Like that's one of the the best things that the deck has it going for it. I feel. Okay. Uh. Great. Um. Yeah. No. I think uh. Ad lib definitely. It, it gives you that flexibility with the gimmick puppet play. So. Um. And then we'll just kind of yeah. get into some standard choices. I guess you you, you had three, a Luber, three uh Albaz, um really standard um one kit. How did you like the kit? Uh. Since you were running the branded and high spirits. Yeah. So the kit was uh, actually really good. Um, it gave me an extra body to beat my uh, round 11 opponent. Um, uh, the reason why I played Kit is because I, I'm playing Iron Dash Dragon in the extra deck, which I feel is also needed. Um, but I'll get back into that when we go into the extra deck. Uh, Kit allows you to uh, put back the Banish branded retribution that you that you uh, used in a combo to add a, a combo piece from your graveyard. Hence why I'm playing three Albions and three Sorineers. And another thing about Kit is it just gives you that uh, that extra 17 to OTK to just special summon her and just uh, go for game, which uh, did come up in some games. Uh, it's another way to get to Brandon Fusion. But uh, one thing that, that you see is uh, with Kit is the Nadir with the Brandon and High Spirits. So in case I get Ashed, you need that to uh, play around Ash. You know, the the you send the, the Iron Jazz Dragon and then you you add Fallen of Albaz, Special Summon Kit. Uh, Kit special, uh, adds the Brandon and High Spirits. You reveal the Albaz and send them. And then you send an Albion and then you set a Brandon Red Set. You could add a Mercarrier. And that's a easy chimera or just some way to play on your opponent's turn. And oh, yeah. I feel like you can't you can't miss that. That's huge. Yeah, no, I, I think it's huge. Um and then we see uh two Cartesia, one Quem. How did you like that ratio? Uh, I mean we do have the one duality and we're playing one Grand Gwinal, so how did you like the yeah. two and one? So it was it was good enough. I, I was testing three, but like Again, like, you already have three uh, fusion deployments, and you, you really rather see uh, your power uh, spell cards than, like, a third Cartesia. It's really good. Don't get me wrong with three uh, Shrouded and three Sornir, 
But the problem is, I don't want to draw the least amount of normal summons that I can in my deck because I, there's you have a lot of ways to search them via tragedy or like, um, you know, gold star foolish and stuff. I feel like even the deer can add you a norm, uh, normal summon. And I just didn't want to draw multiple normal summons. I know it's a card that plays around uh, your brand of fusion getting ashed, but you don't want to have too many of those clumpy hands. And uh, I've been playing the deck for like, <laughs> since it was just a luber. So I don't know. I feel like I have a semi-decent understanding of like ratios of cards. Like, and it just feels kind of awkward and clumpy. And that's, I try to m make my deck as playable as I could. And that's that's why I play two. Okay, totally fair. Um, and you, you said, uh, would you ever up the Quem to maybe two? Uh, potentially. Um, I did miss miss her, but uh, see the thing the thing uh, about Quem is you have the option to special summon it off ad lib, uh, just in case you banish it, like to make a Sanctify or make an Albion or what for whatever reason, but. Uh, I feel like she was fine, but you can play a second one. But again, you don't want to play too many normal summons. Sure, okay. Um, and then uh, we see one Mercurier, one Tragedy, uh, and then one Dogmatica Maximus uh, with the Nadir Servant package. And then we see three Saranir, two Lubelion, and one Magnemut. So how did you like this ratio of Bestials? That definitely seems a bit heavy on Bestials, but did you like the yeah. ratios? Uh, I did like the ratios because every time I saw Sornir, um, it was just incredible. There would be a way to dump fusion into the graveyard or just, uh, Clem or Sornir by itself is, uh, is really strong. Um, I had no complaints. I only, I only played that amount of bestials because I thought I was going to see a little bit of more tier, but I only played against one, but he was, uh, he was really good. He was from, uh, Ecuador. Shout outs to him. <laughs> um so would you maybe change that for the future of tier c's declining representation yeah yeah you but you still i feel like if you're gonna play three uh i'll be on you should probably play three uh four years just so you uh can get to branded fusion that's that's what i i was just trying to get a way to get to branded fusion that's uh but the magnum too it uh it comes in clutch because it concerns uh search out albaz or uh I'll be on the Shrouded Dragon um, or yeah. anything. It, it was really, really good. I remember um, against the Rescue Ace players that uh, play the Singularity Dragon that sends a monster oh, from their yeah. X deck. Where, <laughs> like, yeah, I I ended up uh, round nine before day two. I played against the guy and uh, Magnum came in clutch. I ended up uh, banishing the Negate from his graveyard, being able to add a Shrouded Dragon and like just be able to play because uh, if I didn't have Magnum or I, I think I would have lost because that negate is really, really big, especially against Branded. But it, it, it worked phenomenal. Even in the matchups that it, it didn't come come up, it was, it was just able to get me a dragon or a combo piece. And that's really what you want. You want hard advantage with this deck. Totally fair. I think Magnum helps unbreak unbreak hand certainly. So, how did you like the 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 Indec Dark Magician? It it came in clutch. How was Gimmick yeah. Puppet for you? Uh, the card definitely was the star of the of the weekend. Um, first of all, I feel like if if you're gonna play uh branded, you have to play uh branded Gimmick Puppet. That's his name. He's an honorary branded card, like. <laughs> Why wouldn't you play a win condition in your deck? Like, if you're going game... Like, I would do this to a lot of people at the YCS. They were very upset, but part of the game. The way you gimmick puppet people is you don't do it uh, so you get throwed or bestialed or whatever. You have to do it under loss, and it has to be uninterrupted. Like, where you for sure ensure that your Sanctifier effect is chain link to under loss. That's yep. the only correct way to gimmick puppet someone because if not you're gonna lose uh and one great thing about my deck is the fusion duplication allows you to do that if you have lost on the field um as well as like 
you're playing a win condition. Like you have to use everything in your tool belt in your tool belt to win. And gimmick puppet is one of those cards. But even if they if they ban gimmick puppet or whatever, there's still other blocks you can play. But that's unfair. That's the most unfair thing that you can do against Unchained. They scoop. Uh, I, sometimes at the YCS, I would lose game one really hard because like they would just have everything. They would win the. But then I, game two, I I would be like, okay, that's cool. All right, let me uh, resolve my gimmick puppet lock under three minutes. Let's go to game three. And then sometimes I would draw my board breakers, and you know we would win. That's literally how I see the deck, and it's just very unfair that we have to play cards like this. But if we're able to play them, then you might as well use them. Exactly. You know? and, um, yeah. It's like but you have the... to do it smart. Yeah. You have to do it un uninterrupted. That's a huge part, like making sure that it can't be responded with by branded lost, essentially. That's one of the yeah. biggest parts because a lot of people will just play into that. And then it, even with a best deal on hand and they won't realize what's happening in the, until it's too late. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> exactly. uh, yeah, so gimmick puppet, great card. Um, toxic card, but you, you, it's like one of those cards you got to run, I think. Um so three branded fusion, three branded opening, one branded in red, one branded lost, uh, one branded retribution, uh, just for the standard branded cards. And then the last two, which are kind of tech choices for branded cards would be um, branded in high spirits and branded um, banishment. So how did you like branded in high spirits? We touched on that a little earlier. Um, well, it was really, really good because uh, oftentimes, like, you would ha have a Quem, and then on, like, the, the chance that the Quem lives or anything, uh, or you're trying to set up a combo, you can Albion uh, search the Brendan High Spirits and then uh, still in end phase activate the High Spirits. The Quem will search some of the Cartesia or a fusion monster that you need. Or even a Mercarrier, what whatever, to just to make your boards a little little more uh, juicy, very very threatening. Uh, and it helps you get started by adding anything in your deck just by sending a dragon or like even a spellcaster. You could send Dragoon and add a combo piece. It was really really strong. Like it would it would uh, I I wouldn't brick on it. That's what I'm saying. I know some builds are playing multiples of Brennan and High Spirit. And I can see why, but for me, it was more of a, I, again, I don't want to see multiples of that card. And it was just good enough uh, uh, as a one of. Great. But, yeah. Just, uh, yeah, no, it, it seems like a great card, honestly, as a one of. Like, nice recursion, gives you a lot more playability with cards like Kit and um, uh, Iron Dash Dragon. Uh, Iron Dash Dragon. Uh, and then the branded banishment. How did you like that? That's a very spicy choice. Um, that card. Uh, so you you can see that I'm only playing two super poly. Uh, that's essentially the the third super poly, but a searchable uh, super poly. Um, I played it because oftentimes, like you don't you poly like use up uh your branded and red in a combo or something, and that's like the second kind of little branded in red in a sense uh where it helped you play around like uh evenly match which i did do to special summon back ad lib and then fuse with my my mirror jade on the board and make a drago stapelia so i used that like when they were evenly matching me and that that just shows like kind of the power of the card but yeah. another thing too is, is people would like purposely nib me like and then just knowing that there's an albion the branded dragon in my graveyard just set um, banishment, special summon, sanctifier, and then I still puppet you. Like it was That's ridiculous. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, That's a blowout. Uh, it's, uh, it's a blowout completely, and especially against uh, tier element. Um, I would take out, I would take that card out though if I was going uh, second. Um, but it, depending on the matchups too, because in some matchups, like in slower decks. You can play that card because you know they might kaiju your stuff or something like that. Um, bringing back Mirror Jade is really, really strong, especially if you're fusioning their board 
or uh, you, you can you can have setup with it with Quem, and then uh, Quem will special summon an Albaz, and then you trick your opponent to just play play through your board, and then you uh, you vanishment bring back a fusion monster and use an Albaz and anything on their board. It was really strong. Of the one of duality, which we touched on before, you don't really want to see that card at multiple, so that's why we were on the nice and sweet spot at one, which is very understandable. Yeah. Gives you um, that flexibility. Um, and then, yeah. uh, did you want? Did you have any thoughts on duality besides that? Yeah. So, uh, one thing um, too about duality that it did came up was against uh, tier element. They ended up uh, milling it. Uh, same thing with my Soreneers and my Shrouded Dragons. And oh, that's yeah. another card that is a resource for me to play against Tier Element. And uh, I was making the call as well that I was going to see multiple Tier Elements in my uh, against me, but that wasn't the case. But it it did come up where, like, you know, that extra card helps me uh, become a pick, pitch for, like, uh, Labellion or Fallen of Albaz or even Opening, which which is uh really good like it just gives you that extra advantage that branded lacks word word um and would you uh, you wouldn't up that from here on out right no i think the one of is fine because like you said you don't want to see it like in multiples but when you do see it you'll you'll have uh different ways to use it like for example uh shrouded dragon you can make uh i'll be on the sanctifier dragon Obviously, with the Granule, you can make Dragoon. Uh, I'll be on the uh, the Branded Dragon. You can make a Sanctifier. There's just so many applications you can use it in, and uh, it just gives you re resources. So you can just shuffle back your your two monsters and draw a card. It's like a instead of me playing mul multiples of the cards in the extra deck, that basically helps me recycle them. Yeah, That's no. another reason we need it. Yeah, and like you can turn Maximus into Dragoon too. There's like unlimited options for it. It's a very flexible card. Oh, yeah. It just sucks when you see more than one of it in your hand. So I understand why you're running one. Yeah. Um, I did get that uh, that from you because you were playing one in your old build. But uh, <laughs> I, I like to see uh, what people are playing and see if I can find uh, inspiration. So yeah, it was definitely uh, you because I did see your profile appreciate it bro i'm glad um so yeah and then we have a f three fusion deployment very standard one fusion or sorry foolish burial one gold sark one called by and then three nadir servant to go along with the maximus um did you i'm assuming you really like nadir servant kind of one of those things that you side out going second um you, you'd keep it though yeah, I would definitely. Um, it's a it's an honorary branded card because um, it it allows you to play when you don't like. I rather see that card than see like for example a hand trap because you can at least play. You can at least play. Sometimes uh, the Garura draw if you want to get greedy or if you want to send like a a Titanic clad so you special summon uh Clement the end phase or an Albion whatever. It just gives you the ability to play, and that's all you want to do in Branded. So that's why we, we play three of that. Love it. Or even sending Rimbrum, like Rimbrum too. If you have a Fallen of Albaz in the grave, like you'll play on their turn and you'll be good. Yes, sir. You gotta love it. Uh, we have three Triple Tactics Thrust. We have a Thrust package in here. We love to see it. Three Thrust, two Duplication. A fusion duplication, one triple tactics talents, and a harpy's feather duster. Uh, and then uh, we have two super poly and three forbidden droplet as your board breakers outside of the harpy feather duster and talents. So, how did you like that board breaker lineup? Uh, droplet for me was pretty, pretty strong. Um, like. It uh, literally beats on chain. Uh, you activate Brand Fusion, they chain their DDD Caesar guy. You chain Droplet, a monster, and something else, and you're winning. Unless they have Ash, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but it's just so strong. Droplet is versatile. Um, you normal summon a Luber, they try to activate uh, the trap to negate it with Rescue Ace. You can get it off the field. 
it's very versatile. It beats SP Little Knight. I think like uh, oh, and then uh, you're playing multiple Sorniers and multiple uh, Shrouded Dragons, so it's not it's not as bad. It's it, it's it was incredible. I I liked it. Like that card really overperformed. Yeah. Um. Would you ever up the super poly to th three, and would you keep the droplets going forward? I would keep the droplets for sure. Um. Dro uh. Super poly. You can play the third one, but uh, I would rather play like a searchable super poly, which is banishment. But it's not as good as super poly because it's not a quick play spell. But there's just no room like I, and then uh, at worst you could also pick off the super poly and set duplication so you're playing more than than three super poly you're playing you're playing four and yeah 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 okay uh, four five you're playing five with uh banishment as well i don't know i i i just like the the lineup it it took a, a while to like i guess because at the same time multiple super poly does break you so that's why i wanted to play two of each Hard that I didn't want to see too many of. That's a very killer main deck lineup, I, I will say. Um, and your choices really do make sense. Um, let's get into the extra deck. Uh, we have one Sanctifier, one Mirror Jade, which is something that um stood out to me that I've always like wanted to consider, but was kind of just didn't want to with the Kashira meta. But now with Kashira gone, do you think you really only need that one Mirror Jade? Yeah, you only need one because you can cycle it with ad lib and uh, quem, and then uh, mirror jade is like the card where you just throw it on the board and like you just let your opponent deal with it, and then you can recur it whenever you want because you have vanishment or you have quem, uh, stuff like that or ad lib. But I never found myself making the second mirror jade unless I was in like a really grindy game. But I was just trying to kill and or. Uh, make gimmick puppet as fast as I could because uh, that's just I was just trying to play as fast as I can and the second mirror jade really uh, didn't come up in testing I feel like one is sufficient as long as you know how to play the deck sounds good um, then we have two Albion the Shroud the Branded Dragon one Grand Gwignol. oh the oh the Iron Dash Dragon uh, incredible like card it was incredible just being able to interrupt um during your opponent's turn with rimbrum or uh even the column effect uh came in then titanoclad and then we have the uh one quertus uh one lulu one guardian chimera one uh, red eyes dark dragoon one draco oh. stapelia one garura quertus stood out from the rest because for one uh, it cut out a lot of things like uh, I I know like a lot of people cut him and he he could be special summon off Grangnol as well which is nice. Yes. But uh, one thing is my friend Connor he's like you got to play Cortez man you're gonna lose to Unchain and he wasn't wrong because Cortez literally beats a, a lot of boards that Unchain makes. It even handles uh uh like SP Little Knight when it leaves the field or whatever. So. Yeah. You want to have monsters that float, and like Quartus just stood out from the rest. Um, that's something that I really love about Quartus, um, and it just punishes people making Baron. You know, you want to negate m me making you zero. Okay, I'll summon an Albaz or something, summon out a uh, something like like a Quam or, or... It, it was just really strong. I I needed to play Quartus, and then as for uh, Lulu Wallet. You need to play him because uh, you're playing Maximus, and that's one of your targets if you want, depending on the matchup again. Um, I sometimes would summon him off uh, Granginiel, depending on the matchup, but he mostly comes out uh, for Masquerade if if I needed Masquerade. Okay. Uh, Drago Sapelia, Goat, uh, Garura, like a, the, one of the best TCG exclusives cards we have ever had because it literally says okay you're activating the dear servant that's cool you're drawing one adding maximus and then uh sending another two so just the pluses did you miss mud dragon um no i i didn't i uh i that's one thing that i was like testing 
a lot of is like how many times I did mess Mud Dragon, and and I didn't. I would rather see Garura, because for one, um, Garura does a lot more for what it is. It's a generic super poly target, and as well as to draw one. Uh, Mud Dragon's really good in like you know like Vanquish Soul or like even against Unchain or or other matchups like that. But I I can't justify uh, playing him. Maybe in my side deck, but uh, since I'm playing two super poly, I really didn't think he would come up that much too. That's totally so, fair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, that's something I've always worried about with playing Brand is, like, do I need to play the Mud Dragon? But I think it really doesn't... I think as long as you're playing the Guru and, you know, you have your other monsters, you can really just make the most out of Super Poly. Yeah. Um, then we'll get into the side deck. Uh, for the Hand Traps, you had two Ash Blossom, uh, two D or three DD Crow, and two Draw and Lockbird. How did you like that lineup? Um... No complaints whatsoever. Uh, Ash, you gotta respect it. So I, I had a side deck it, because uh, I had I needed something for the mirror or some. You never know. Or also, uh, Ashing uh, unchains like trap card, like when they're trying to combo off. Sometimes is enough to, uh, you know, pass their turn, which is something that actually happened. So uh, wow. it was great. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, you just you and I don't play too many of the hand traps. Droll is probably I should have played three of that. But then again, the thing about Droll and Ash is they're really strong, but they're not combo pieces to your deck. They're not darks or lights. Yeah. And um that's that's something that that I wish we had more of was just more generic hand traps that um combo with your deck. Would you play Valor? Uh, I saw Steven yeah. Santoli run three in his first place at the event, and he just I, liked I it. I think so. Yeah. I think uh, moving forward with uh, Rescue Ace, you could play three Valor. The combo piece to make uh, Sanctifier, and Sanctifier is just that, that homie. Um, or I, just I Grant Gwignall. <laughs> yeah, or Grant Gwignall. Yeah, exactly. Or Albion, yeah. whatever. Or Albion, whatever. Yeah, but uh, sometimes... It depends on the rescue ace player too, because some rescue ace players like they wouldn't play combo, and some of them didn't. It really depends on the rescue ace player uh, how impactful Valor would be, because some of them would just some turbulent set four, and I would be like, if I was only <laughs> if, if I was only maining Imperm or Valor, you would have yeah. been cooked. <laughs> yeah. Uh... No, but I, I had I have no complaints. Like Ash is really strong, and you still have to uh, you still could play it but the thing is it's it's not a combo piece but Valor would probably be a better call now that you know that rescue ace is quote unquote the best deck but uh let, let me tell you something guys uh get into the habit of making sync the fire and that matchup becomes a lot better for sure you cosmic cyclone three evenly how did you like that um evenly was like overperformed i uh love people just uh drolling me ashing me and then searching my evenly match for my deck just to like blow the their set four away it was it was amazing um evenly matched like you should be playing uh moving forward especially in the rescue ace meta it hits yeah. a lot of decks i know a lot of decks have omni negates but like you can force the Omni negate and then have evenly matches like one of your last cards to blow them out. Yeah, and then you know activate a Nadir servant or act activate something like that, like a one card power card, and then you could just you know be on even footing. That's that's uh where some of my matchups. A lot of people would like think they would hit the right cards, and then I would just have my final card be the strongest card in my hand, and then wow. I would activate it. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Uh. uh Cosmic was uh, insane too. You need to play Cosmic because for one, it hits Florundaries is a uh, uh, card that you have to activate in the main phase, the trap. Uh, it stops the organism trap, and it just gets rid of like uh, some pearly just 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 hate for generic ma matchups as well as like Unchain Rika. Fortunately, I didn't draw Cosmic, <laughs> but <laughs> you know you can't win them all. For sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, and uh, Droll, I never saw it, 
So, yeah, he can. You're not going to see him in 60, but uh, just on the off chance that you do, you just have him in there. Yeah, for sure. And then you, uh, the last three cards in your extra deck are, or side deck are Necro World, Banshee, Zombie World, and Masquerade. How did you like those cards? It looked like you definitely came prepared for flu. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, man, game one, man, in day two, I, I lost the Florunderies and I just put Banshee. Games two and three, and then I ended up winning. Crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, it also beats on chain as well. Um, they can really link into uh, their fiends. Uh, I wish I drew it against Rika. Uh, card just covers a lot of weird matchups that normally you would Dragon struggle Link. against. Yeah. Yeah, Dragon Link too. Uh, I did not draw it against Dragon Link either. <laughs> but the card's ridiculous. Uh, you should be playing it in your deck because. Uh, it's you could literally foolish burial uh, necrobanshi with brand diffusion and you're you're winning. A lot of decks need to draw a co- uh, cosmic cyclone or or something to get rid of it plus a combo piece. But you're gonna have necrobanshi uh, plus an established board. Like that's kind of game over for most decks, uh, especially if they're like monotype. And did you like the masquerade? No, nah, but I I did my best and you know. Uh, you know, there's more events in the future, as long as they keep Brand Diffusion and three, then we're good. Of course, <laughs> and I can't wait to see what you do in the future. You know, this was a really uh, stellar performance, and um, I think Branded, you know, as you just kind of showcase, is a wonderful meta pick for this meta. It doesn't have any problem cleaning up Rescue Ace and Unchained. Um, you know, Tierlum is certainly one of those matchups that you can build towards as well. Uh, so it's just really strong meta call. And uh, people discount the deck, but uh, don't because you're going to get swept swept by it. Uh, so um, thank you very much, Yuri, for coming on the channel and showing off your deck profile. And uh, congratulations once again. Um, thank you, man. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And leave a comment below on what you guys thought of uh, the deck profile. See you guys later.